Hi everyone, uh, this is a uh, sitting, I'm obviously sitting, uh, tying a few midge pupa uh, this time of the year. It's coming up to the beginning of the season. Well, today is the 15th of March, it's actually the beginning of the trout season. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the weather's not so good. Uh, we're sitting, the weather, the river's up. There's uh, been quite a bit of snow in the hills. So it's quite cold. I mean, I could head to a loch and uh, see how we got on, but I'm just going to tie some more of these flies. And I thought I'd like you to see this fly. This is just a basic midge pupa, though it's a fun fly to tie. It's basically pushing your uh, skills a wee bit by tying by the same piece of pheasant tail, the tail, the body, the thorax, as well as the thorax cover with the same piece. So it is fun to tie now. Tie these in different sizes. Uh, that's a size 14. Uh, this is just a competition heavyweight. This one's from Full and Mill. It's quite a, it's quite a solid hook. It's a good wire. Now, first thing I'm going to be doing basically is show you the materials for the breathers. I'm just using a normal wool. This is just a standard wool that I bought and put onto a piece of cardboard. Uh, you need, you need the dyed pheasant tail, in this case this is dyed black. Now this can be tied, this fly can be tied all colours. Whatever colours, if you want to use the pheasant tail, uh, I mean whether it be natural, dyed, bleached and dyed, uh, and the colours right, you will represent midge pupa with it. There's two ribs there in the fly, we've got a fine holographic, a small red holographic, this fly. And I'm using this is Venier's silver wire number 27, which basically is a small, it's a small wire, so it's quite thin, it's not too heavy, it makes it easier to tie. Now, as I say, to tie this fly, I'm using the same piece of pheasant tail uh, to form the tail, which you don't normally get in a midge pupa, but it extends the body a wee bit, gives it a slightly bit longer. Uh, I like it, uh, I like Pheasant tail limbs, basically representing midge pupa, and I've fished them for many years. But as well as doing the tail, the body, and continue up through the thorax, folding the back, forming the thorax cover, it does everything really. So I say it is fun to tie. Now the thread I'm going to be using this is the Uni Thread 80 in black. Now, I like to obviously run the wax through it. I mean there is wax on it, but not. The basic fly tires wax, uh, the, well not basic, but I mean this wax gives it grip. So we start at the head and we come down. We move the waist and the way down. You can flick it off like I did there or you can actually cut it, trim it away. Now I'm going to come to, to the point, as you can see, slightly by the barb. If I was, I'm in line, if I let, normally I'd be letting the thread go, it'd be in line with the barb. But this is a turn or two slightly round the bend a wee bit. Now this is a pheasant tail. Now you're looking. I mean, in this, I mean, every tail's slightly different. Uh, every sometimes you'll find it slightly heavier. Now I'm looking here. I'm just counting them two, four, there's seven. So I bring them ninety degrees. Seven fibers there. Just to give you an idea. Tail length. It's a wee short tail. It's just you want a couple of turns. One, two with the tail on top. Now you not. Know, Tail, tail length is probably, if you, if you measured it, probably close to maybe half to two thirds of the way up if it was on the body. Now there's two ribs on it. Now one rib's going to come towards me and the main rib for holding it together is going to wind, be going the same way as I wind my thread. So the one coming towards me, you're best to tie it on this side. Now I'm just Turn the device round so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just catching it on with a turn, just to hold it. And then I've got my wire. And I'm going to basically do the same again. And you see that the wire length is practically the length of the hook, so I don't want any steps. So then what I do is I lift up the pheasant tail, continue all the way up to a head length away from the eye, which is there. Give yourself room at the head. Pheasant tail fibre being the weakest, I'm winding towards myself. Now as I wind up, as you can see, I'm just basically back and forward with the, the pheasant tail just to spread the fibre so it covers quicker. It gets all the way up. 
gets to my thread now because I'm winding towards myself I've basically got to come over the pheasant tail with a turn and I turn on the hook do the same again and what that does, that basically locks in the pheasant tail now first up the body is again I'm going to counterwind or wind towards myself uh, with the red holographic tinsel being the other side, other side it naturally just winds on we just work our way all the way up just ribbing it in this case right even through the thorax then do a turn onto the base of the head area and we we'll lock it in with a couple of turns much like we did uh, with the pheasant tail trim away now this is basically holding it together the silver wire so we rib the normal way we wind the same way we wind with thread and we're counter ribbing the rib and the pheasant tail fibre now as we come into the fourth turn so normal ribs well, what, sort of distance apart we're coming in one two three there's the fourth uh, turn coming up we catch the pheasant tail fibre on the top just like that and we continue to rib up through all the way towards the eye catching the wire now the wire now protects and holds the materials together and holds the fly really so then we're happy with the number of turns we want we've got wax on my thread we can now tie in we've got our, our white wool now there's in this a normal wool with three to four lengths in it if we open this out you can see there's three we only need the one to get out we're going to do like a bow tie type style so it's quite simple we just come over the top with a turn and then come underneath and then do like it's just it works out like a figure of the eight uh, so basically just to hold it but what I do here is grab both ends and make sure it's right at the away from the eye away from the head length right up and when we're happy then we can come in with a couple more turns figure eight just going to take away the excess here then we can bring over our thorax cover now before we do end make sure there's wax on your thread and make sure your thread's right up at the breathers as we call them and then what we do is come over the top with a turn pull back pull the breathers out of the way make sure you get three or four turns in there come in with a nice sharp pair of scissors just trim away form a nice head and we can work finish now we could put a wee bit of varnish on my thread here we shall lock in my turn or work finish just hold back the breathers at this point and then we can work finish trim my thread away and then trim the breathers just to get one of the easiest ways to throw it over the front or just either side it's up to yourself I usually pull them forward and trim front of the, the eye of the hook just a wee bit there if you miss one or two you just throw them back there we are those are the ones I missed there And that's it, simple wee fly, simple wee midge pupa. As I say, I've formed the tail, body, it's so obviously the thorax as well as the thorax cover. It's once you get into it, it's really really quick. But this is a great wee fly tied, but you can tie this, as I say, in any colour, depending on what colour of pheasant tail we have. It'd be natural through to bleached and dyed or even natural dyed colours, which I like to use. Obviously black's very good at this time of the year. Um, great fly. I say best size is probably 12s and 14s, 10s are very good as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. So again, thanks for watching, until next time.